It is so easy for developers to lose the handle on what makes open world games so fun. In recent years, some of them have become a giant sea of boring, overbloated, samey checklist style games that just lack focus and direction. Ghost of Tsushima is not one of those games. In fact, I would consider it one of the best open world games that I've ever played. Welcome to completion number 87 of the Potato Backlog Project. I don't buy new games unless I've finished my old ones. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for the only rating that matters in the entire world, the Tater Raiders. And let's talk about Ghosts of Tsushima. I played the PlayStation 4 version of the game on my PS5. I did not play any of the multiplayer aspects that the game has to offer. I have read it's pretty good though, but I won't be talking about it in this video. There is an option to upgrade Ghost to the PS5 version for around $13 Canadian, which I refuse to do. I've already paid for the game and those upgrades should be free in my opinion. Ghost of Tsushima tells the story of the Mongols invading the Japanese island of Tsushima in 1274. The game starts you out on a beach during the initial invasion. You end up one of the only surviving samurai from that battle. Your first task is to rescue your uncle from the big bad Khan that led the invasion and begin the journey of retaking your home. The story and characters of Ghost of Tsushima become the driving force of the game right from the beginning. As a player, you can choose to only focus on main missions, but the game presents side missions and quests in a way that makes them very hard to ignore. You are tasked with meeting and recruiting allies to aid you in rescuing your uncle. Each of these initially required story threads go deeper, even after you reach the part where they will help you. These missions or tales or side quests are all interesting and add depth to the characters of the world. How much or how little you help them along those storylines ends up reflected in dialogue later in the game as well. The game does this with most if not all of the side quests it has to offer. They all feel so much deeper than you would find in most other open world games. Through them you will learn more about Tsushima, a snapshot in time of how the culture and life was during that time period. The game somehow made it feel effortless to want to continue to learn about the island and its people people by helping them. Even things as simple as traveling to the next area or investigating a request from a local peasant. At its core, Ghost of Tsushima has a melee focused battle system. You do unlock ranged options and other support items as you play, but the bulk of your time will be spent cutting down foes with your awesome katana skills. The game shows you that samurai are supposed to face their enemies head on with honor. The Mongol war tactics make it necessary for you to adapt and develop new ways to fight them. This is how you end up becoming known as a ghost. You are presented with the option to stand off against opponents as you approach them on the road or as you approach different Mongol camps. Through story missions, you're also shown other ways to approach fights, with stealth and without honor. Sneaking up on enemies, assassinating them from above, you'll eventually even unlock poison blow darts and even abilities that turn Mongols against themselves. Ghost of Tsushima does a great job introducing new battle elements and items at a pace that doesn't overwhelm the player. I found myself approaching and playing the game with a mix of stealth strategy and just head-on aggression. I enjoyed the parry mechanics of the game and the stance switch options of standard melee combat. You will unlock up to four different sword stances that can be freely switched between on the fly depending on what type of enemy you're facing. Outside of some small camera issues and tight quarters, the game does a terrific job with multiple enemy encounters. I never felt frustrated not being able to attack who I wanted to. No missed inputs. Anytime I failed or died it was due to my mistakes or bad decision making. Not something in the game that was broken or bad design. You will find yourself traveling and fighting alone for a good portion of the game. But there will be times when you will fight and attack camps and compounds with allies. The AI controlled allies actually kill other enemies and make a difference in those fights. This felt refreshing to me as I've played a lot of other games where you end up having to clean up and kill every other enemy on the screen regardless of how many allies you have fighting alongside you. Character leveling in Ghost is done through skill points gained through experience. New stances and new skill options become available as your legend grows as you get deeper into the game. I really liked how all of the options given to the player held weight. There was no real bad path you could go down with your skill assignments. Lots of times these styles of games will have a lot of what I call filler content. Entire skill trees or chains just there to make it look like the game has a ton to offer you, with maybe 3 out of the 10 options actually being something viable that you'll use within the game. Everything here feels like it has purpose and is well thought out, with real effects when implemented into your gameplay. In that same respect, the overworld map is kept pretty simple for the most part. Things are marked on the map as 
to find them, areas of interest, main camps and places to get your upgrades, but it doesn't feel jam packed. It's not a massive mess of stuff just there to give you anxiety if you haven't been there yet. And don't get me wrong, there is lots of stuff in the world, it's just looking at the map doesn't look like a cluttered mess. The world of Tsushima is large, but not overwhelming. You are given a mount pretty early on to help you with your travels. You do get some battle options available with the mount, but it's not one of the main focuses for fighting. This is one of the better controlling mounts I've used in an open world game, and I would say better than Roach by about 175%. I mentioned earlier I played the PlayStation 4 version of Ghost of Tsushima, and it was nothing short of stunning visually. The color choices made here by the development team were incredibly bold, awesome details like leaves falling, the wind blowing and affecting so much of the world around you. In fact, the wind was used as a way to point you in the direction of any marker you might have placed on your map. This is an ingenious idea instead of having a giant arrow moving on the screen and looking totally out of place. I found myself riding and running around the world aimlessly at times, just to take in all the visual stimulus it had to offer. Depending on in-game time of day, you could catch some breathtaking views and some truly spectacular visuals within the world of Tsushima. So what is the main thing that Ghost of Tsushima does that sets it apart from other open world games? Why does this game work so well where others can end up being an absolute boring grind fest? For me, the main thing is its focus, a clearly defined story that sets you off with urgency, not a game where you don't know what you're doing for the first three to four hours. There's a combat system that has a fleshed out in-depth melee focus. The ranged and special items given there are in direct support of that system. And most importantly, the game never made me feel like I was missing out on something if I chose not to do it. If I didn't care about a certain side storyline, it didn't punish me with missing a crucial powerful item. It didn't constantly remind me that I could go and do side missions and quests like this was the first game I ever played in my life. It respected my choices, which in turn made my playthrough feel less stressful. The giant world didn't seem so big, and I was just able to let the game take me where it took me. It felt like a natural exploration of the island, of the characters, the story. Nothing where I felt forced to go places just to get something done and checked off a list or off of my map. The game starts and finishes super strong. The satisfaction I had when I completed this game I don't get from very many video games. Even when you do finish the game it doesn't have to end there if you don't want it to. New Game Plus opens up, you're able to continue to explore the island and all the unfinished storylines if you have any. There is a harder difficulty mode you can try as well, and again a multiplayer mode if you choose to explore that. Incredible value even in 2024 when you can still get the PS4 version for 10 to 20 dollars. The easiest five happy potato faces out of five. Assassin's Creed Shadows has a lot to live up to here and I will directly compare my experience with Ghost to Assassin's Creed Shadow when that game comes out. This was open world gaming done right. With that the backlog project rolls on. I feel like I could talk about that game for a really long time. they will get really boring. Thank you so much for watching. Be kind to yourselves and others that deserve it. We're on to the next one. Welcome to completion number 87 of the Potato Backlog Pro- Hit the friggin' mic again. Welcome to the completion.